In this video, we are going to learn about quantum mechanics. In this beginner's guide, we will cover up all the major concepts of quantum physics, the ideas, the thoughts, the opinions, where it came from, and most importantly, the mathematics of quantum mechanics. As far as the mathematics is concerned, I will keep it simple so that you can understand, and this could serve as a guide so that you can learn quantum physics better. Because the basic idea of quantum physics is to give you the core concepts. My name is Shaunak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students and I welcome you to watch this video. So before we start into quantum mechanics, let us look what are the topics that we are covering. So we are covering what is quantum mechanics, what is called a quantization, what are the strange phenomena that occurs in the world of quantum mechanics, what is superposition, wave particle duality, wave function collapse, multiverse? What are the films which are developed on the concepts of quantum mechanics and what we should be aware about? The fascinating history of quantum mechanics and what is called a wave function. So, after being setting this agenda, it's a good time that we should start and go ahead with the video. So, first of all, we need to understand what is quantum mechanics. So, quantum mechanics uh, is a fundamental theory in physics that provides a description of the physical properties of nature at the scale of atoms and subatomic particles. It is the foundation of quantum physics, including various subjects like quantum chemistry, quantum field theory, and quantum information science. As you can see right on your screen that it comes from quanta, the Latin word, which means so much or as much so. Right? So, and it is the quanta is called the plural. So, quantum mechanics differs from classical mechanics in that energy, momentum, angular momentum and other quantities of a bound system are restricted to discrete values which are called quantization. So, it is often used in physics just to tell that what is the measure, in fact the smallest amount of something. The fundamental notion which I was talking about quantize, that means objects having characteristics of being discrete and most importantly the hypothesis of quantization. I would also like to tell you that objects have characteristics of both particles and wave which is important and central which is called a wave particle duality. And there are limits of how accurately the value of a physical quantity can be predicted. We will come to this part, but this is just to tell you what is the definition of quantum mechanics. So, right on your screen, you can see it is a procedure for constructing quantum mechanics from classical mechanics. That is what is called quantization, and we will first look into what is a quantization. Uh, okay, so uh, quantization in physics is the systematic transition procedure from a classical understanding of physical phenomena to a newer understanding known as quantum mechanics. It is a procedure for constructing quantum mechanics from classical mechanics. So when we talk of an object being quantized, as you can see, I've just taken a random uh, kind of a shape, which means quantized. What we mean that are this. That means these are discrete chunks of anything. Let us call it energy. So these are the discrete chunks of energy. And when we come to the atomic model, we see that these numbers are being quantized. Say, for example, 1 joules, 4 joules or whatever, anything. So this is a kind of a wave as you can see. Uh, I would just like to show you again. So, so you see, what I'm trying to tell you is that this wave is something which is continuous and continuous is one of the feature of classical mechanics. So when we are moving from classical mechanics to quantum mechanics, what we are trying to do is that this continuity is now being measured into 1, 2, 3 and 4, these green balls. What I am trying to tell is that these are discrete. So movement from a continuous object or a measurement which is continuous into discrete objects, even the energy levels which is given, for example, one joules or whatever, that is also called discreteness. So I can tell that we can tell that it is a systematic transition procedure from a classical understanding. 
So energy allowed a particle to have any value of energy. That is what we call in the classical phenomena. And now what we get is that only certain values of energy are allowed. So when, when certain values of energy are allowed, that is what is called discreteness. As, as you can see, we will see further that the different energy levels in the atoms or in the atomic procedure, the classical procedures is also very discrete. So first we understand what is quantization, that is a systematic procedure and we are dividing or moving away from the continuous system to a discrete system so that only certain energies are allowed. That means we are restricting our way of allowing energy in a system, just we cannot allow any energy but certain amount of discrete energy. Okay, so here is a glass of water and what we tell is that what if we say that we, are, we know that we cannot uh, trying to fill the cup with water. So if we ask the question how much water would go in this cup, you would probably say any amount which will less than one cup or two cups or etc. which will fill it up here. Now as you see here water is not a continuous quantity though it can be measured in composed as H2O molecules. Now a standard cup for example, if I take this, would be around 250 milliliter, which would be roughly around 8.2 10 to the power 24 molecules. Now, this quantity, what I'm showing right now, this can also be calculated, but I'm omitting the calculation right now. So, the exact number, however, is not important. Now, we cannot split the water molecule into two halves, right? So, it has to be something like one molecule, two molecules, and so on. So what we can say from here is that the cup of water or we can say that the amount of water of in the cup is quantized because the amount of water in the cup only takes certain values say one molecule, two molecules and so on. So because we cannot split molecules into two halves, right, so only it appeared in discrete value. So in quantum mechanics as we encountered the word quantum which is from the Latin word quantus which means more or less the uh, a certain amount. So the name quantum mechanics actually tells us that many of the things that we discuss appear in discrete values. So the quantum of water is one molecule. So from here we can see that when objects interchange by exchanging energy, momentum or angular momentum, we have assumed that we could transfer any amount of energy, momentum or angular momentum we wished in the classical scenario. However, quantum mechanics tells us that we can only transfer these things in discrete pieces. Why? Because they are quantized and here that is the reason. So quantum mechanics tells us that we can only transfer this energy in discrete. That means we cannot transfer whatever the way we want. So how do we define, now that we have understood what is a quantization, so how do we define quantum mechanics? So quantum mechanics is a fundamental theory in physics that provides a description in the subatomic levels. So we can also tell that if we take energy, momentum and angular momentum, uh, we can say that they carry discrete values, right? That means uh, the quantities of a bound system are restricted to discrete values quantization. Objects have characteristics of both of waves and particles which we will soon see and there are limits how to predict accurately the physical quantity and uh, because of this it is a complete set of initial conditions that is the uncertainty principle. So just I have shown the uh, illustration of a dice being thrown because we can only predict them up to a certain extent. So there are limits to accurately predict the value of a physical quantity which can be predicted prior. So this is how we can refer to quantum mechanics as far as we have understood quantization. The meaning, literary meaning of the word that it will allow, allow discrete value. It is of wave and particle nature and it limits uh, accurately the value of physical quantity to be predicted. Okay. Now, we all know that quantum mechanics, uh, which is, I would say, even stranger than general theory of relativity, has got very strange phenomena. Now, when we talk of strange phenomena, I mean to say 
things which baffles us, confuses us, and these things are not matching with the common uh, sense understanding that we have. So first we will deal with what is called nature is discrete. Now, when we talk of nature being discrete, the laws of quantum mechanics strictly follow the discrete nature of energy distribution. So we have seen earlier that in classical world, if we take a spring and we attach it to a point, then we can put as much as energy as we can, for example. But in the quantum world, we cannot do that. That means nature has restricted us somehow that no, we cannot do anything that we want, but only on a certain amount that is restricted. Here is a kind of an illustration that the finite number of well, uh, wavelengths also show that the colors that an atom emits. And here is the typical Bohr model where the energy levels are just finite in teacher and multiples of energy levels. That means that uh, because nature is discrete, we can take an analogy that the energy levels where the electrons or the uh, subatomic particles are moving and jiggling around, that is also finite integer. That is very discrete. So here you see from the quantum world, we move into what is called the how much, because the name quantum in Latin means how much and so much. And that is because we get a discrete value, not any value that we want. So the first uh, strange things or you can say something which defies our common sense is nature being discrete, which was developed later by Max Planck and other physicists, which we will see later. The second strange phenomena that we encounter is that it is probabilistic in nature. Now, when we say that it is probabilistic in nature, what we're trying to tell is that these tiny objects have a probability distribution that describes their location, momentum, and few other things, such as whether they will spontaneously break up into smaller things. In this situation, probability is not a measure of ignorance, but simply the way these things work. So, what we need to understand that it is impossible to predict the certain outcome of a single experiment, that we do an experiment and we throw a ball or something and we get an output which is certain not possible. The only thing that we can do is that predict the probability of detecting each of the discrete possible outcomes, that it will be here or there, only the probability. So, here is a photon, if I take this, this red one, the photon which way it will go. In that case, if I get two points, which are marked in uh, on your screen on uh, black dots, so I can say 42% there is a probability of hitting the wall or the point by the photon and 58% there is a chance that it might hit here. Right. And this actually baffled and made a kind of a disturbance in Albert Einstein's mind. So all we can do is that through quantum mechanics we can predict where the photon or any kind of a uh, uh, any kind of a system will hit that all. So that is why I have written the only thing that they can or in in the sense quantum mechanics can predict is the probability of defecting each of the discrete possible outcomes because nature is discrete. So that is why uh, you know in a letter to Max Born Einstein made one of the most famous and often quoted remarks. So that is why I said that he took uh, wrote that quantum mechanics is very impressive, but an inner voice tells me that it is not yet the real thing. The theory says a lot, but does not really bring us any closer to the secret of the old one. I, at any rate, am convinced that God or he does not play dice. Einstein expressed sentiment similar on to this on many occasions throughout his life. In various ways, Einstein became fond of insisting that God does not play dice with the universe. So, uh, in my earlier video on Nobel Prize in Physics, I have also explained that, that the deterministic world where Einstein belongs is shaken by this thought that we can only measure the outcome of a system based on the probabilistic nature. The next thing which keeps us busy and thinking is what is called a superposition. Now, quantum superposition is a fundamental principle of quantum mechanics. 
it states that uh, much like waves in classical physics, right, any two quantum states can be added together and the result will be another valid quantum state and conversely that every quantum state can be represented as a sum of two or more other distinct states. So here you see this is a classical system where I have got, don't worry about this bra and ket notation, we will deal it later. So there is a two distinct system, one is zero and is one. But you see that in, say, in case of a quantum system, one system is uh, overlapping the other. So that is why we call it is a superposition. Let me give you a quick simple example. If I throw a coin right up on the air, what happens is that when the coin is in the air, we will tell that it is in superposition. That means it occupies all the positions. It is both in head and tail conditions. However, when the uh, coin lands around here, we tell that it is either head or a tail. So it can be similarly explained by this famous Schrodinger's cat, uh, uh, you know, analogy that until and unless you are looking into the system, the cat is both dead and alive. Okay, so where do we come from here? The, the next uh, strange phenomena that we encounter is called wave particle duality. Okay, in the year of uh, 1906, J.J. Thompson won a Nobel Prize in Physics for his discovery that electrons are particles. Now, his son, George Page Thompson, won the Nobel Prize in 1937, mentioning that electrons are waves. So, the big question is that who is correct? The answer is both of them are correct. This is the called the wave particle duality, which is one of the cornerstone of quantum physics. It applies to light as well as electrons. Sometimes it pays to think about light as an electromagnetic wave, but at the other times it is more useful to picture them in the form of particles called photons. So every particle or quantum entity may be described either as a particle or as a wave. So that is why you see there is a famous line from uh, Albert Einstein that we now have a contradictory pictures of reality separately neither of them fully explains the phenomena of light but together they do. That means separately if you take either as a wave or as a particle it doesn't describe but together yes they do. So this is one of the cornerstones you have to remember that nature or the particles that we encounter are dealt both in wave and particle. So we call it wave particle duality. The next strange thing that we come is what is called a multiverse version. Although it is not very popular among scientists. So what is called that when we throw a coin up in the air, uh, when we look into the coin, right? We saw that when we look into the coin, it falls down and we get either a head or a tail. So here what it is telling that the idea that observation collapses a wave function, uh, don't worry if you don't understand wave function, we will deal with that, forces a quantum choice which is known as the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics. Now, however, it is not only the option on the table that the coin falls. Advocates of the many worlds interpretation, however, so here you see when it falls, it is called a wave function collapse. As soon as the function collapses, it is denoted by the Greek letter psi, we are able to see the coin, whether it is a head or a tail or whatever. What is a wave function? Hold on, it's just, I will be explaining. You just consider that this is a mathematical function. Now, what happens is that uh, advocates of the many world interpretation argue that there is no choice involved at all. Instead, at the moment of the measurement is being made, in case of our coin, reality fractures into two copies of itself, one in which we experience an outcome A and another where we see outcome B unfolds. So it gets the thorny issue of needing an observer to make stuff happen. Does a dog count as an observer or as a robot? Right. So what happens typically is that when the, when the, when the function collapses, or when the coin falls or any even falls, it multiplies into different worlds. So you see on the right hand side corner, there are so many balls. So our perceived universe 
branches into near infinity alternatives and in one of that world the observation happens maybe a head or a tail or a this or a that. So this is what is called a multiverse version which opens up our chances that we might be living in a different world or there are multiple universes which are existing and these universes are those when the wave function collapses and when we are seeing that particle whatever is happening the cat is dead or alive it goes and migrates into a different kind of a world. The next important phenomena is what is called a decoherence and a wave function collapse. Now quantum decoherence is actually the loss of quantum coherence. I will come to that part. So I will take a coin, oh sorry, um, a, a piece of uh, you know dice and I throw those dice on the air. So we already know previously that when we are throwing the dice in the air, this part this is basically when it is in superposition. That means the dice can be under any condition, all the faces, all those things. So it is in superposition. Now when we observe this, we get the dice either, you know, on the upper side on whichever the face it is falling. And we call it that the wave function collapses. Now see the wave function collapse occurs when a wave function initially in superposition of several eigenstates reduces to a single eigenstate. Don't worry about eigenstate, you can just ignore for the time being. And it is a measurement will reduce the several possible states and gives a single state by adding them together. This is the essence of wave function. The moment we observe an event in the era or in the arena of quantum physics, the entire wave function collapses and finally we get uh, to know into a single eigenstate or maybe a single value which is right there on the table. In the many world or the multiverse interpretation, we see that this option is being multiplied, multi multiplicative and it goes directly into another universe which is not being accepted by most physicists. Now quantum decoherence is the loss of quantum coherence. In quantum mechanics, yeah, so these are the several eigenstates. So in quantum mechanics, particles such as electrons are described by a wave function, which we just saw, a mathematical representation of the quantum state set of a system. A probabilistic interpretation of the wave function is used to explain various quantum effects. Now decoherence, as you can see here, can be viewed as the loss of information from a system into the environment, since every system is loosely coupled with the energetic state of its surroundings. Viewed in isolation, the system's dynamics are non-unitary. So from the coherence, we get to decoherence. I will explain decoherence maybe in a later video, but wave function collapse and decoherence is very, very important. Okay. So far, so good. We have understood the definition of quantum mechanics. It helps into this. It is discrete in nature. It gives only a probability in order to find where the particle would be. And there are certain uh, phenomena which baffles us and which eludes the experience of uh, of day-to-day of -day affair. Now, most of this time, I have seen that students or young people who start studying physics, especially quantum mechanics, they get carried out by the films and the media which are happening. So, I would just like to take a notion, a note of caution. So, you see, interstellar. It is a film that adventures of a group of explorers you have seen and who make use of a newly discovered wormhole to surpass the limitations of human space and so on. There is also a film called a quantum break. Uh, a quantum break. Then there is this photon, right? Uh, uh, here in, uh, you know, this is also based on quantum mechanics. There is a film called Multiverse where four brilliant university students are forced to confront themselves in terrifying ways when their quantum physics experiment leads to an entangled parallel existence that leaves them questioning who they are and what is reality. This film, Quantum Wilp, is theorizing that one could time travel with its own lifetime. So Dr. Sam Beckett here stepped into the quantum leap accelerator and vanished and he woke up himself finding trapped in the past, facing mirror images and all those. So just a note of caution that these are based on uh, uh, not the reality of quantum physics. So for the youngsters who are watching those films and reading quantum mechanics, I would request them let us not get carried off and rather 
check out the reality because this is not the reality what the films tell they make the use of quantum physics their weird and strange behavior and make films but the reality is pure mathematics okay so now that we have understood it is the great time that we go into one of the fascinating histories in science the history of quantum physics now unlike relativity theory the birth of quantum theory was slow and it required many hands so it emerged in the course of the first quarter of the 20th century with contribution from many physicists including einstein who really did not like it during the early 19th century a uh, chemical research by john dalton and amedeo avogadro lent weight to the atomic theory of matter an idea that james clerk maxwell and ludwig boltzmann and others built upon to establish the kinetic theory of gases the success of kinetic theory gave further credence to the idea that matter is composed of atoms yet the theory also had shortcomings that would only be resolved by the development of quantum mechanics ludwig boltzmann suggested in 1877 that the energy levels of a physical system such as a molecule could be discrete boltzmann's rationale for the presence of discrete energy levels in molecules such as those of iodine gas had its origin in his statistical thermodynamics and statistical mechanics theories which was backed up by mathematical arguments and as would go by the case of 20 years later in the first quantum theory put forward by max planck so energy is quantized and we see planck's law okay ernst solvay was a belgium chemist and an industrialist whose patents brought him considerable wealth which he used to bankroll several philanthropic endeavors Now in 1894 he founded a sociology institute at the University of Brussels called Institut des Sciences Sociales in 1903 he found the Solvay Business School also the University of Brussels and in 1911 he established the prestigious meetings of top scientists known as Solvay Conferences here is the famous picture and in his letter dated on 15 june 1911 ernst solvay explained that he conceived the first meeting as an international scientific council to elucidate some topical questions of molecular and kinetic theories arthur schuster joseph lamour uh, lord rayleigh were originally invited but they could not come they were replaced by edward hudson george hoslet martin kunsen Frederick Lindman for and Poincaré was od, omitted from the list drafted in May by Walter Nemst the meeting took place from Sunday 29th October to November 4th 1911 but the conference itself lasted only Monday to Friday the proceedings were established in 1912 and each participant received around 100 francs from the Solvay Travel Conference By this time Ernest Rutherford model uh, has established model of the atom has been published but much of the discussion involving atomic structure revolved around the quantum model of Arthur Huss in 1910 also at the Solvay Congress in 1911 Hendrik Antoon Lorentz suggested after Einstein's talk on quantum structure that the energy of the rotator needs to be changed This was followed by other quantum models such as the John William Nicholson model of 1912 and Nicholson had introduced the spectra into his atomic model by using the oscillations of electrons in nuclear atom perpendicular to the orbital plane and he established the maintaining stability In 1913 Bohr explained the spectral lines of hydrogen atom again by using quantization In his paper on July 13 on the constitution of atoms and molecules he discussed and cited the Nicholson model Bohr model of the hydrogen atom is pictured as we all know a heavy positively charged nucleus orbited by a light negatively charged electron the electron can uh, only exist in certain discretely separate orbits here comes again the discreteness of quantum mechanics labeled by their angular momentum 
which is restricted by an integer multiple by the Planck's constant. In 1923, the French physicist Louis de Broglie put forward the theory of matter waves by stating that particles can exhibit wave characteristics and vice versa. This theory for a single particle and derived from special relativity theory. Building on de Broglie's approach, modern quantum mechanics began in 1925. So here you see the pictures of Werner Heisenberg, Max Born, Pasquale Jordan, uh, Erwin Schrodinger and they developed matrix mechanics and the Austrian physicist Erwin Schrodinger invented wave mechanics and the non-relativistic Schrodinger equation and this gave birth to what is called the modern quantum mechanics. The first application of quantum mechanics to physical system were the algebraic determination of the hydrogen spectrum by Wolfgang Pauli and the treatment of diatomic modules molecules by Lucy Mensing. Heisenberg has formulated an early version of the uncertainty principle in 1927, analyzing a thought experiment where one attempts to measure an electron's position and momentum simultaneously. However, Heisenberg did not give a precise mathematical definition of what the uncertainty in this measurement meant, a step that would be taken soon by Wolfgang Pauli and Hermann Weyl. Starting around 1927, Paul Dirac began the process of unifying quantum mechanics with special relativity by proposing what is called the Dirac equation for the electron. The Dirac equation achieves the relativistic description of the wave function of an electron that Schrodinger failed to obtain. It predicts electron speed and led Dirac to predict the existence of positron. He also pioneered the use of operator theory including the influential bra cat notation and described in his famous 1930 textbook. Beginning in 1927, researchers attempted to apply quantum mechanics to field instead of single particles resulting in quantum field theories. Early works included Dirac, Pauli, Viscock and P. Jordan. In 1927, they applied quantum mechanics to fields instead of single particles. This area of research culminated in the formation of what is called quantum electrodynamics which were pioneered by Richard Feynman, Dyson, Schweinger, S. Tomonogna and during the 1940s quantum electrodynamics describes the quantum theory of electrons, positrons and the electromagnetic field and served as a model for subsequent quantum field theories. In theoretical physics, quantum chromodynamics or QCD is a theory of strong interaction between quarks mediated by gluons. Quarks are, as you know, fundamental particles that make up composite hadrons such as the proton, neutron and pion. So quantum chromodynamics is a type of a quantum field theory uh, called a non-abelian gauge theory with a symmetry of SU3. The theory of quantum dynamics was chromodynamics were formulated in the beginning by, Pol uh, by Pultizer, Gross and Wilczek in 1975. So uh, the theory of interaction between quacks mediated by gluons. Now building on the work of Schweinger, Higgs and Goldstone, the physicist Glashow, Weinberg and Abdus Salam independently showed how the weak nuclear force and quantum electrodynamics could be merged into a single electroweak force and this led them to the winning of the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1979. However, after this, as you see, we stepped into the uh, colored era from black and white. There are other in, uh, important developments which I have omitted in order to keep the length of the video short. As you see, you can go back to my video on uh, Nobel Prize Physics 2022 where I have explained further into the developments of Allen aspect and those who won the Nobel Prize. So this brings us to the end of history of quantum mechanics, but still one thing has kept us busy, that how things are forming and what is a wave function. Okay, so a wave function in quantum mechanics, uh, it is a variable quantity that mathematically describes the big characteristic of a particle. Okay, say for example, if I take classically, if I want to 
denote a particle or a point, we can do it by position and time. Say for example, we take a kind of a coordinate 2 and 4. Now this is something which is we already know. I mean to say from classical mechanics, we can point it out. Now here is a wave which goes on like this, right? And what we do is that we try to find out the position of an electron or say for example any particle. So the particle can be here, it can be here, it can be here, it can be here or it can be here. Now the problem is that when we are dealing with waves, the entire phenomena of finding a particle is phased out in a certain space where it is difficult or almost impossible to find out the position of an electron. So the value of the big function of a particle at a given point of space and time is just something to the likelihood of the particles being there at the time. It might be there or might not be there. So by analogy with waves uh, such as those of sound or a wave function is designated by this. This is the Greek letter psi and it may be thought as an expression uh, or for the amplitude of the particle wave, although for such a wave's amplitude, it has no physical significance. So, here it is a variable quantity that mathematically describes the wave characteristics of a particle. So, the value of the wave function of a particle is given as the likelihood of the particles given at a time that it might be there. And most importantly, the square of the wave function, however, does have physical significance the probability of finding the particle described by a specific wave function psi at a given point is proportional to the value of psi square. So don't worry about those mathematics what we are dealing. I will come back with another separate video explaining more on that. But let us just understand what is a wave function. It is a function which is gives us a probability to find a particle uh, in quantum system. And when it is squared, it gives us the probability or the probability density that the particle might be there. Okay, so if psi itself uh, has no physical significance, but its square is an absolute magnitude, right? Uh, when evaluated at a particular point. So if we take a kind of a psi uh, within bracket x, it should be multiplied by its complex conjugate and using this which gives a probability density. Now, just try to understand in a simple way what is probability density. Probability density means, for example, if you are trying to find Mr. X in a populated place. So, we cannot find in a place where it is less populated. We try to go in a place where there are more heads, more people and possibly we can find Mr. X. So, we try to find out the probability density by doing a complex conjugate. But remember, we should do a normalization. Why? Because if it gives 1, then the particle either should be there or nowhere. So, it gives the probability of 0 and 1. So, we can say from here that a wave function is defined to be a function which describes the probability of a particle's quantum state. That means there is no surety, different from classical mechanics. It only gives the probability. A wave function may be described to... Uh, describe the probability of finding an electron within a matter wave uh, hypothesized by de Broglie. And when it is squared, it yields to a real number solution and the probability of an electron within a certain area, whether it exists there or not, it can be assessed. So, this is what is wave function all about. If you don't understand complex conjugate or squaring or normalization, you can omit it. Just you can understand that it gives the probability of finding where the electron is because in quantum physics we do not know anything for sure and when we square it, it yields a number either 0 or 1 and this 0 and 1 helps us to find the electron where exactly it is. Okay, say so for example, uh, it, uh, let us take a classical example, a particle mass m which is constrained to move along this x-axis subject to some force, function or f of x of t. Now, the program of classical mechanics is to determine the position of a particle at any given time, x of t. Now, what we can do is that we know that we can figure out the velocity using this simple Newtonian mechanics, the momentum using rho equals to mass times velocity and the kinetic energy using this or any other, I mean to say any other dynamical variable. 
Now, how we go about determining this value, x of t? We can apply f equals to ma, that is Newton's uh, formula. And uh, if we know uh, with the initial conditions that the time is zero, then we can definitely find out what is x of t, right? This is a typical classical way in finding out the position or at a specific time. But in case that we are dealing with the, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, a quantum mechanics, then Schrodinger equation plays a role which is similar to Newton's second law. So, given an initial conditions, for example, this one x of t, the Schrodinger equation determines. This is the Schrodinger equations. Uh, it determines x of t. So, for all future time, just as in classical mechanics, Newton's law determines x of t for uh, the future. So, the Schrodinger's equation is something analogous. To Newton's second law, where this one determines for all future time, and in Newton's second law, this determines for all future time. So don't worry about these weird symbols of partial differential. We will come back to that. So for the time being, let us understand what is a wave function, and this wave function one squared gives us the probability to find that particle, and using f equals to m a. Uh, in order to find the position, momentum or anything. We cannot do that in quantum mechanics for that. We have to use the Schrodinger equation which is somewhat similar to Newton's second law and just we substitute the psi which is called a wave function. Okay, so far so good. We have understood wave function etc. But what exactly is the wave function all about and what is the rule? I mean to say how does it work out? That we will deal in the next part of the video because here we have to deal with a lot of mathematics and I will develop one by one, stage by stage on Max Born's statistical probability. Then we will decipher each and every element of Schrodinger's equation and then we will see how we can use Schrodinger's equation for a typical hydrogen molecule atom and we can find out that. So, till now what we have understood, let us quickly summarize. We got a basic understanding of quantum mechanics. I think that is fair enough. We got the concept of quantization. That means what is quantization and discreteness. Some of the strange uh, facts of quantum world. Uh, the branches of topology is something wrong. I should have deleted that because this is something which is coming from my last video. We checked out the reality. That means films, etc. which shows quantum mechanics is really not how quantum mechanics evolved, I mean to say, uh, how, how it evolved, the wonderful history, who are the people involved in that, and what is wave function, and how Schrodinger equation can be something analogous to what is Newton's second law, and we can use that to find out the probability of an electron or an subarmetric particle's position of further details. So that's all for today's video. I hope you liked it. I will be continuing with the quantum mechanics series to explain further on Heisenberg's uh, on the uh, on the Schrodinger's equation and further details. So do let me know how do you like it. Please put up your comment. Uh, click on the uh, subscribe button and then click on all uh, for the bell notification to get all the notification from Physics for Students. I will continue with this series with, uh, as well as other series on physics and mathematics as I do. I will wait for your comments. How do you like or is there anything more input that you want to put up? Thank you for watching this video. Wishing you all the best for the coming weekend. This is Seanak signing off. Promising you to come back with yet another video on physics and mathematics. Till then, wishing you all the best and goodbye. Now, you can be a part of our team. You can send your scientific articles, essays, research papers, lesson plans on a particular subject of science. For further details, please write to us at editor at physicsforstudents.com. Stay safe and happy.